my name is Wendy Stanton. I'm the refuge biologist for the Madame Mesquite National Wildlife Refuge Complex, and that includes Madame Mesquite National Wildlife Refuge, where we're at here, Swan Quarter, and Cedar Island National Wildlife Refuges. I love North Carolina wetlands. Not only is it teeming with wildlife, but just the ecosystem services that wetlands provide for water quality and for overall human health. You know, we need to conserve our wetlands to the greatest extent we possibly can and enhance their habitat quality. Not only again for wildlife habitat, but also for the human health component. We have a variety of different wetland types. We have the emergent wetlands that we manage intensely. We have um, open freshwater marsh, probably have about 800 acres of cypress gum swamp. We also have about, I'm going to say it's less than 200 acres of Pocosin habitat, which is your southeast um, shrub bog. I'm in charge of doing all of the wildlife monitoring on the refuge and just the biological programs in general. We do a lot of habitat management. We do a lot of invasive species management. We try to um, monitor the, and evaluate our management actions and we look at wildlife response. And the main, my main objective at Madden Mesquite is we do a lot of moist soil management and about 2,000 acres of moist soil units. And those are managed intensely for emergent wetland plants that have a lot of the seeds and that provides an important food source and and essential nutrients for the wintering waterfowl. Madame Mesquite National Wildlife Refuge is considered the premier national wildlife refuge for wintering waterfowl along the entire Atlantic Flyway. This is like the place to be for wintering waterfowl. And northeastern North Carolina is, is very important as well in the state game lands and the other refuges. But really when you look at numbers and the amount of habitat we have for sanctuary, it's at Madame Mesquite National Wildlife Refuge. It is about 50,000 acres. And of course the centerpiece is the lake, which is about 40,000 acres. But along the perimeter, we have a variety of wetlands um, and some forested areas. And in addition to providing the habitat, we provide a lot of sanctuary, which is very important, which is, means that the wildlife come first. And so we try to minimize any type of human disturbance in those areas. So that's a, that's a very important reason why so many different species and the numbers are so significant here at Madame Mesquite. Madame Mesquite has, it's mainly known for its waterfowl and other water birds, but mainly waterfowl. And we winter a significant portion of the Atlantic flyway population of tundra swans. Um, northern pintails will get 35 to 40 percent of the Atlantic flyway. Northern pintails that winter here. And so from the percent of those different species, this is very significant area for waterfowl. Um, other species we have or other guilds of birds we have are wading birds, long-legged wading birds. We on occasion have quite a few shorebirds if we can get the water down to mud flats or up to two inches in depth. Madame Mesquite is known for its breeding ospreys and if you have seen any of the stunted cypress trees out there, those are where most of the osprey nests are located. And those cypress trees we think they germinated back when they drained this lake back in 1916, 1926, up to 1930 when this lake was dry. Yeah, so we have about 48 um, osprey nests that had um, hatchlings and fledglings present in the nest as of this year. And so it was exciting to see that. In some of our marsh areas, we have Virginia rail, um, yellow rail. We also have a nesting bald eagle on the refuge. The lake also has a nadromous fish, herring, elwives. It's a big fishing place for mainly largemouth bass, um, black crappie, white perch. There's a lot of catfish in the lake, an overabundance of carp, which is one of the problems with the SAV is they, you know, they stir up the bottom and it increases the turbidity. Right now we're seeing a lot of birds are still using the lake as a sanctuary, as roosting, loafing, resting, and then they're feeding in the moist soil units and some of the private impoundments. Um, the swans and snow geese and Canada geese, they'll also go out to some of the private farmlands and they'll feed on corn and winter wheat and that sort of thing. This past year, however, we had a record-breaking number of waterfowl in the impoundments and on the perimeter of the lake it was about 380,000 ducks and swans and geese, you know, water fowl in general and um, they were heavily using the impoundments or the moist soil units we use that word interchangeably because of the lack of food in the lake I think over time we're going to start seeing a decline in the waterfowl populations in the lake and at the refuge
SAV stands for Submerged Aquatic Vegetation. These underwater plants that grew in the lake used to provide food for the birds. These are the kinds of plants that used to grow in the lake. Scientists have measured the plants in the lake for a long time, and since 1993, they have noticed a big decline in the plants in the lake. Now there are no plants left living in the lake. The water is not clear enough for the plants to grow. Why have the plants disappeared? Experts believe there are several reasons the water is no longer clear in Lake Madame Mesquite. There are too many carp in the lake. They stir up the bottom and uproot the plants. Nutrient levels are too high in the lake, making algae grow and the water cloudy. And sea level rise has been keeping the lake from draining like it used to. Other species on the refuge, we have black bears, we have um, river otter, we have exotic nutria, we have muskrats, we have a, a big population of beavers, um, amphibians and, and reptiles, we have many different species of frogs, southern leopard frogs, um, green tree frogs, squirrel tree frogs, um, cricket frogs, just a plethora of, of amphibian species. Turtles, if you're driving the, the dirt roads, you'll see snapping turtles, box turtles, yellow belly sliders, there's many, many turtles. And um, this area is just really teeming with wildlife. used to be abundant emergent vegetation and cattails you know um, around the perimeter of the lake but over the years Phragmites has has spread and encroached and out competed most of that emergent vegetation. I think there's a few sections on the northwest side that has some cattail left. The Phragmites is is absolutely thriving around the perimeter of the lake right now and it's continuing to spread and the Phragmites is one of our big management challenges in our moist soil units. There's actually three species we really target. Number one is Phragmites, number two is alligator wheat, and the third one is Suspania. Those are the three big species that we really focus on. We're trying to keep those species in particular at the lowest level we possibly can. We set them back to the extent that we can promote native plants to regenerate and start to thrive to provide the habitat for wildlife. We welcome volunteers to come and help us and if you do come to visit the refuge, whether you're fishing or taking your boat out in the lake, please pick up after yourselves. Don't leave fishing line and hooks and trash on the refuge. Wildlife will eat that trash, the birds get entangled in the fishing line and it causes a lot of serious issues. And if you're bringing a boat in from another a water body, make sure there aren't any plants. We're trying to keep invasive plants down in the lake. Um, when you come also, we invite the public to attend our public meetings. We're all working together to try to improve the water quality in the lake and just the overall quality of the habitat on the refuge. So I have continually been outsmarted by black bears. Um, black bears learned probably 20 years ago that wood duck nest boxes are a food source. They were initially attracted to the boxes because we would place the box on four by four salt treated wood and they liked the salt. And so they eventually learned that the wood duck boxes, especially when the hen starts laying the eggs, was like a lollipop and they would completely destroy every wood duck box that we put up. And we tried many different ways to try to outsmart the bears, including one year I had an intern place nail strips all around the box. And we would come back and we would see bear fur stuck to the nail. And I, I just think that the bears were... Scratches. Yeah, exactly. And then they still knocked the box down. We even put um, some of the wood duck boxes on cables across canals thinking that we got it. We've outsmarted these bears. And we, the, a bear must have crawled across that cable and pulled the box down into the canal. And um, so I've been continually outsmarted by black bears. I've been very humbled. <laughs>